Today we are studying the new chapter, terpenoids. Now these are the compounds, they form a, a group of compounds which are mostly found in the plants. Mostly they are found in the plants, but few of them, they are also found in some types of animals, birds, say fungi, one of the types of the terpenoids, which uh, causes the color. The, uh, the color of some shape, just like parrots and some fungi these are those colors are due to these some types of terpenoids so mostly they are present in the say uh, plants but some of them they can also be present in the other sources like fungi or some animals animals means the we say some birds the birds have different colors beautiful colors those colors are maybe due to the terpenoids some types of terpenoids now there are different types of uh, terpenoids. The simpler two uh, monoterpenoids. These are mono and sesquiterpenoids. Mono and sesquiterpenoids. These are the mono and sesquiterpenoids. These are the chief constituents of essential oils. Essential oils, there are two types of oils, fixed oil, essential oils. Fixed oils are non-protile oils. They are thick oils. They are not, to say, evaporated at room temperature. But the essential oils, they evaporate spontaneously at the room temperature. So we said they are, those are also not volatile oils. Essential oils are volatile oils which are normally used in the perfumery. From the last, last ancient time, these, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, what do you call parts of the plants which have the perfumes which has uh, the agreeable smell in there it is a present in some part of plants so in the ancient time those parts were extracted with the, some of the you say solvents and those solvents will was used as the perfumes the main use the essential oils is in perfumery then you dye and try the dye and try terpenoids these are the you see these are non volatile uh, uh, terpenoids these are obtained from the plant uh, and sir dye or try terpenoids ke bare mein aapne kya bataya ha repeat kar raha hu ye aaj pata nahi liye ye net masti kar rahe kal bilkul sahi chal rahi thi aaj wo chalte chalte pass ho jati hai Diotriden, these are present in the plants and trees, gums and resins. The resins and gums, which are obtained from the, some plants, sometimes from the trees. So those are the parts. Gummy or resinic, resinous, resinous part, gums, these are the thick type of the secretions, which are produced by the, some plants, some trees. And the, so mostly the dry and dry turbinates are present in the uh, gums and resins which are obtained from the plant and trees. The, uh, nowadays, it is sesquiterpenoids, S-E-S-Q-U-I, sesquiterpenoids. These are the most, we say, uh, say uh, latest. Uh, the, 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 initially, this was not obtained, sesquiterpenoids. Nowadays, the sesquiterpenoids, they are also isolated from the plants. Then there are the tetraterpenoids. This is the first. The, um, uh, the mono and sesqui, then dry and dry, then before the tetra, there is sesqui turbinates. They are most recently they are invented, the sesqui turbinates. And finally, the tetra turbinates, they form a group of compounds, especially they are known as carotenoids. Carotenoids. And most commonly known carotenoids is alpha, beta, and gamma. And beta carotenoids, the hydrocarbons, beta carotenes, it is used as the precursor of beta. The polyterpenoids, these are the main classes of the terpenoids. Polyterpenoids and polyterpenoids, the most important example is the, the rubber. Rubber is the important example of the polyterpenoids. So these are the main types of the uh, terpenoids. Mono and sesqui, then we say dry and dry, 
then cisquid, then the, the tetraterpenoids, finally polyterpenoids. Most, you see, natural terpenoid hydrocarbon have the general formula C, C5, H8, whole N. Let me clear this. Most terpenoid hydrocarbons, because the terpenoids, they are some terpenoids, they are hydrocarbons which only contain the carbon and hydrogen. There are some oxygenated derivatives of terpenoids. Actually, terpenoid, the, the word terpenoids, actually in the study, they were studied as terpenes. Terpenes. But what happens? Terpene. Ene is by chemists, being a chemist, we know ene is the ending in the compounds which contain the carbon carbon double bond, unsaturated, unsaturated hydrocarbons. Any alkene, propene, butene, ethene. So that is why this name was getting confused. Some people were getting confused when ene was used. Terpene means all those compounds which contain the double bonds. So now this terpene word, the terpene word is only only reserved for the compound hydrocarbons. The terpenoids, hydrocarbons which contain only carbon and hydrogen. Otherwise, the compound, there are, as, as I told you, oxygenated derivatives. Oxygenated derivatives of terpe terpenes, uh, derivatives. And those are mostly either alcohols or aldehydes, sometimes esters. The most commonly alcohols and aldehydes. These are the oxygenated derivatives. So, so jo, just to remove this confusion, that is, we are just not only studying the hydrocarbons, but we are studying the hydrocarbons as well as the oxygenated derivatives. That is, those, those contain the aldehydes, which contain the ketones, which contain the alcohols like the terpenol, citrol. The, uh, these are you know, the, the, the oxygenated derivatives of camphor, camphor containing the, the ketonic group, terpenol, citral contains aldehydes, uh, terpenol contains the alcoholic group, even menthol, menthol uh, contains the alcoholic group. So there, there are the uh, terpenoid derivatives which contain the oxygen also. Those are known as oxygenated derivatives. So just remove the Confusion. We normally we believe that all these compounds, hydrocarbons as well as H8, at least two units will be there. And if you if you the N is replaced by the two, then it will be H C five to means ten and H sixteen. So this this will be the monoterpenoid. Monoterpenoid will have the formula C8H16. And then again, number two, if we say C5H8O3, it means H H eight O three. It means now C15 H twenty-four. So this will represent the sesquiterpenoids. And then third, it will be C5, H8, L4. So C20 and H32. And this represents the diterpenoids. And then again, Then again, C5, H8, and uh, uh, N5. So C25, H40. And this is sister terpenoids. And as I told you, these are the 
most recently invented guru then uh, one two three four five now five is is it c third here c5 h8 six then c30 and h20 uh, 48 so now this will represent the triterpenoids tri terpenoids and then fifth put in six now six will be how much c5 same c5 h8 now here you see here here there is no uh, the, any, any terpenoid which have eight and uh, uh, seven directly now we'll c8 so now if we see eight you know this will be c40 h here 64 and this is forming the tetra terpenoids and these are classified especially their name is given carotenoids tetra tetra terpenoids are classified as general name is given bg ठीक <laughs> 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 छह का पोज़ जरूर छह का चिदंबर है ना कपो डायरेक्टली लेव जरूर सी है ना एट एट वाला जो कोर्स हो वो है क्लास ही अलग चैप्टर तो अलग ना चैप्टर अलग लिखे हुए हैं कैरोटीन वाइट्स इस पे आइटेट्रा इट इस टेट्रा का पीन वाइट्स बट इट इस डिटेल्ड स्टडीज इन डिटेल बिकॉज़ देर आर वेर so that is why these are tetra terpenoids and the commonly it is known as carotenoids and the compounds which have more than you say c8 n8 the number which has more than that these are not tetra polyterpenoids so this is the tetra and poly ter polyterpenoids And probably, type, as I told you, this is the best example is the rubber. Rubber is the one of the example of the poly uh, terpenoids. And give it over. This is the time this one is the volume two. I will find out volume two. Take the time detail my part. I will tell you the textbook of organic chemistry. Volume two, find out by find out. Talk with the picture. रिमूव ना कर जो ऐसा खाली नोट करे वो तो हाँ नोट करो इस तार इस तार जो नवरी जब जगह रहना डिटेल में जो चाहो ना वॉल्यूम आ फाइनल वॉल्यूम टू तार किताब उनमें बिजी हो रहा है जगह रखो रही जीरो तो उनका उनके बच्चों को दोस्त को रही जी तो उन्हें क्लास में उनको बताया जो दायु � कोगुनोसी फार्मा कोगुनोसी बुक में मिलता है मिली हुई तो टेक्स्ट बुक का फार्मा कोगुनोसी उनमें बढ़ते किताबन हिकड़ो है मुझे ख्याल में भाई मोहम्मद अली इंडिया जो है बाकी बस देखिए इनसे एको ट्रीज फार्मा कोग टेक्स्ट बुक का फार्मा कोगुनोसी बाय ट्रीज जो फार्मा कोगुनोसी बाय टाइलर ये I have a book by Mamand Ali, who is an Indian. This is a textbook of Pharmacognosy. E.N. Pharmacognosy. This is a book of 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 Pharmacognosy. The Department of Pharmacognosy is a book of Pharmacognosy. This is a book of Pharmacognosy. Otherwise, this is a book of Urdu Bazaar. This is a book of Pharmacognosy. This is a book of Pharmacognosy. This is a chapter of Pharmacognosy. छोटी डिटेल होनी है जो यूज़ वगैरह होना है, खास कर टर्पिनोइड्स, फार्माकोग्निस आही नेचुरल प्रोडक्ट हैं, उनमें अल्कलाइड बहुत हो, उनमें टर्पिनोइड्स में आल नेचुरल प्रोडक्ट्स विल बी देयर, 
तो फार्मा टेक्स्ट बुक ऑफ फार्माकोग्लोसी ही मशहूर किताब है बाय ट्री जिगड़ो जो टाइलर और जो जो बधान बाय मोहम्मद अली अनाब कुछ आया है ये मशहूर किताब है ना जा फार्माकोग्लोसी या तो नाउ विल प्रोसीड फर्दर नाउ Now what are the the classification and term? What are the term? You know how they are classified and what are their properties? Now one of the thing there is when they were thermally decomposed, when they were heated, they were because most of they are the liquids. So when the terpenoids were uh, heated, then thermal decomposition, thermal decomposition take place. Thermal decomposition means degradation by the due to the temperature. When they were heated, their solution was liquid was heated. Thermal decompose, decomposition take place, and when thermally decomposed, what happens? The all mostly, mostly all of the terpenoids they produce mostly all terpenoids they produce this compound. There is two methyl one three butadiene unit, one of the unit. All other compounds are also obtained, but this is common unit, which is found in all thermal decomposed pro pro products of the uh, terpenoids. When uh, terpenoids they are heated, the liquids are heated. On heater heating, they uh, uh, decompose. And one of the unit which is obtained mostly in commonly in all the decomposed compounds, that is isoprene. Commonly, it is known as isoprene. And the I pick is two methyl one three butadiene. The way of writing is different. Sometimes we can write methyl group like this one. Then here this CH two group again CH here. Then see we can same compound. It is same one two three four. Way of writing is different. Otherwise this same one two methyl one three butadiene that is commonly isoprene is written in this way anyway. But this is the unit. Which is commonly present in the thermally decomposed product of all terpenoids, and this was first pointed out by this Wallach, and when it was invented, first the, by the uh, Wallach, this was known as isoprene rule, and this is, was given the name isoprene rule. What do you mean by isoprene rule? Isoprene rule means any compound if on thermal decomposition produce the isoprene as one of the unit. Then we say this is under isoprene unit, uh, isoprene rule. Isoprene rule means when the compounds on thermal decomposition produce one of the unit isoprene, that that is known as isoprene unit. Then later on, and I think in 1925, 1920, near to 1925 or 21 or 22, there was another scientist in gold. He was in gold. He proposed and he found. That you see, mostly the when the as uh, the isoprene units are obtained, the mostly the terpenoids they are produced, they are formed by the uh, addition of the isoprene units, and the addition of isoprene units is head to tail. The isoprene units are present in the molecules of all terpenoid uh, terpenoids in the in uh, combination in the uh, fashion of. One head to tail. That this this end is considered the head, and this was considered the tail. So head of one compound and tail of another one. So we, well, if I write same in in this way, here, here, this is the isoprene. So now this head. Now again another compound here a tail means tail of this one. This is a tail on this one. Here in this way. Here in this way, you see same same type of word. Here this one, this one, and now one, two, three. Then another compound. You see here, here double bond. One, two, three. Ah, uh, sorry. One, two, three, four. It is one, two, three, four. Butadiene. It is also one. This is one, two, three, four, five. So here it is the tail of this compound. It is the head. Of. In this way, the combination of the isoprene units, isoprene units are combined in a, a compound to form the terpenoid. They are, are mostly, 
then head to tail wave and this was known as special isoprene rule a special isoprene rule so what is the difference between the isoprene rule and the special isoprene rule isoprene means whenever thermally decomposed all terpenoids produce is isoprene and this was known as isoprene rule and the another another this was first pointed out by the wallace then in 1925 in gold he proposed that the isoprene rules are there but they are combined in a head to tail way the fashion in which they are combined at the head to tail that the head of one isoprene unit is connected with the tail of the another isoprene unit and in this way the terpenoids are produced and this was given a given as a name a special isoprene rule but there are and this is this rule this rule isoprene rule is we uh, use a uh, uh, strict rule rigid rule but this this rule is special rule is not rigid just this is the guiding principle we can say if we can use this as a guiding principle but it is not the rigid command the why because there are some compounds they are following this uh, their rule but they are not uh, terpenoids and there are certain terpenoids which follow the which uh, say, uh, say uh, which uh, contain the same isoprenoids but they are not connected in this way that is the head to tail but they are connected by the tail to tail the compound in uh, especially the carotenoids a uh, tetra terpenoid lamedulol erimophene these are the two tetra types of tetra terpenoids or carotenoids they are the they in the center they are connected by the tail to tail although they possess the isoprene means they are obeying the isoprene rule but they are not obeying the special isoprene rule so isoprene rule is used as the guiding principle it is a rigid rule isoprene unit rule is it's a rigid rule but here there is flexation some compound they can follow or they sometimes they compound do not follow so we can use A special isoprene rule as a guiding principle because some compound they are see like I told you, as I told you, told you the names they are belong to the carotenoids or tetra terpenoids lamedulol let me write here name lamedulol lamedulol another is erimophene these are the two types of tetra terpenoids that is they are belong to the carotenoids these compounds are connected at the center by tail to tail not head to tail uh, so now here we say special rule is, is sometimes it is not it's a, it is uh, a the 100% correct now then again monoterpenoids in the classification we now you see again it when the study was carried out it was observed that the isoprene units as i told you head to tail way that was like this one is it here here this type of compound was there so right either in this in this way or in this way there were the same thing 1 2 3 4 Here one two three four five. It should be five. One two three. One here. One two three four and fifth. So now, last time I told you when thermal decomposition takes place, uh, most of the compounds, the naturally occurring terpenoids, they produce the one of the unit as the isoprene. So that was known as isoprene rule. Means on thermal decomposition, if The isoprene unit, along with the isoprene, along other other compounds are also formed. But if one of the unit is isoprene, and if one of the uh, say compound isoprene is formed on thermal decomposition of the compound, then we say it is known as thermal uh, isoprene rule. Then in in gold, he uh, did research on this compound. The yes, isoprene unit is obtained. but mostly the compound they are formed by the combination of isoprene units but this combination is head to tail then again, there are few examples like lamedulol and erimophone 
uh, uh, remove uh, phylon in which these are the carotenoids, tetracarotenoids, in which the compounds they were you see attached in the central uh, portion. The isopyl units were collected by the tail to tail way, and there are then again again there are certain compounds which do not contain the just multiple of carbon five. That they are not those are not following the formula, but even then <laughs> the terpenoids. Sometimes there are compounds which are not following this rule, but they are terpenoids. So now we say isopyl unit is uh, oh, the rigid rule, but uh, the uh, special isopyl rule in which we say when the the isopyl units are connected by the head to tail, it is not the uh, the rigid rule, but we can use it the guiding principle that mostly the majority compound is composed of this type of compound. Then we say, say there was uh, uh, the, the word James dialkyl group, dialkyl group. Like this group, we last time told this type of structure was present. So now here, James means this is a carbon which contains two groups, two alkyl groups that are lying on the same group, same carbon. So this type of compound in which two alkyl, any two groups, if any two, they lie on the same carbon, same position. With the, that position is gem position or geminal. Normally, write G E M gem. Full name is geminal. If they are attached on the one two position, it is the one one position. One one position is geminal position or gem. One two position is vicinal position or vis position. Vis or vicinal position is the neighboring groups. So now here um, in the studies shows that the alkyl groups, which are two car alkyl groups, they are present in the same carbon. These are known as gem alkyl groups. And when the uh, in gold he proposed the special isopyl rule, he also proposed that he according to this the cyclopropane or cyclobutane, that the rings which contain the three or uh, four that is isoprene, that was the isoprene rule, then head to tail special isoprene rule, then in gold also. Sajid pointed out that is it gem dialkyl groups. They are entering to, uh, to, to stabilize the ring. Actually, uh, the, the uh, terpenoids, they, the, the basic are the, the, so say, the first simplest, the uh, terpenoid, monoterpenoid, that contain the 10 carbon and 16 uh, hydrogen. If it is open chain, then we say acyclic monoterpenoid. If it is a, uh, say a cyclic, we say it is a monocyclic monoterpenoid. So the monocyclic monoterpenoids, they, will, they are considered that contain, they contain the parasimine structure. That is, if you say this is the position, if two, this is one isoprene unit, it is another isoprene unit, if you combine together, then there we will have this type of structure. So now, actual structure, that will contain the double bond, that will be the monoterpenoid. But without this double bond, we have this structure in which is a, it is a cyclic structure which is aromatic compound. That contain, you see, like just like this one. Here, this compound, here, how many carbons are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then 7, 8, 9, 10. So if you combine the same way, like this here, like this here, how many carbons will be, total carbons will be there? Say, here, if you combine this one, we will have this structure. How many carbons? Six carbons, these are six carbons, seventh carbon, eighth carbon, nine carbon, ten carbon. So in this case, again, ten carbon. So ten carbon containing the structure, aromatic ring, benzene, then benzene contain the at the one four position. So one, two, three, four. At the four position, there are two alkyl groups. But at the one position, this group is lying, which contain the gem dialkyl group. These groups are known as gem dialkyl groups. In bicyclic compound, again, they will also contain the gem dialkyl group, just like this one. Either in this way, either, either in this way, or in this way, we say these are the various types. In this way, these are the gem dialkyl groups. Here, how many is one, two, three, four, five member ring? Here, one, two, three, four member ring. Here, one, two, three rings. Cyclic compounds. 
they contain the they are considered the derivative of parathymine actually this is the parathymine structure there is just one position at the isopropyl group which contains the gene dialkyl group and here at the four methyl group we can call it the one isopropyl four methyl benzene or commonly we call it is is a one isopropyl toly uh, if you start from here one two three four four isopropyl toly or isopropyl benzene is also known as cumin so if you say cumin derivative then we say we can call it as four methyl cumin actually it is a compound which contain the benzene ring and the one four position one methyl group and then isopropyl group so generally this compound is parathymine parathymine is the aromatic compound so we say the monocyclic Turbinoid. They are considered the derivative of parathymine. So, if you you see hydrogenated, then aromatic compound is change into cyclohexane. So, this is the para derivative of parathymine structure. Mostly the monoterpenoid, monocyclic terpenoid. They are they have this type of structure. Now, they may contain if it, they are bicyclic. Then what happens? The total number of carbon you know it's ten, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If they are bicyclic, then bicyclic they may contain the uh, ten carbon. Actually, ten carbon uh, open chaining. Here we have the two uh, the isopropyl group here. Uh, these are outside the ring. Sometimes the these groups may be present in the inside the ring. For example, they may be they may contain the four member ring. They may contain three member ring. Uh, they they may contain the five member. Total number of carbon remains same. For example, if you put here here three member ring, then here two gem dialkyl group. So total six number of six cyclic hydrogen. Then seven, eight, nine. Yes, is here six member here six member seventh, eight, nine. Ten. So again, if you make it four membered, the here like this one six six membered here and four. This is the four membered ring. Six plus four membered again two gem alkyl groups. Here six, again, if you make it five membered ring, so now like this one. These are the different structures. Again, one, two, three, four, five membered ring. This also got a gem dialkyl group. As I told you, gem dialkyl group they they are making the cyclopropane ring or cyclobutane ring more stable, but they are they are decreasing the stability of six member ring. So now there less time. We are directly coming to the now uh, the terpenoids. How we can isolate the terpenoid? Generally, generally how the isoterpene uh, uh, the uh, uh, terpenoids they are isolated from the natural sources. There are three, uh, four methods by which we can isolate the terpenoids from the natural sources. Four methods. Let me write here. Already more time is spent. Here, isolation of terpenoids. From the natural sources. So number one method is is known as uh, actually we say the, uh, the, uh, the these are the compounds which are essentially monoterpenoids and cis terpenoids, which are volatile compounds. They normally they, uh, we say uh, they are uh, they are obtained by the expression number one method. Expression number two method is. Steam distillation because they are steam volatile. The steam distillation. Third method is we say uh, sip, uh, uh, extraction by the by means of volatile solvents. Extraction by the volatile solvents. Fourth, fourth method is known as the uh, say uh, adsorption, adsorption, right? Absor adsorption, opposite to absorption, adsorption in purified feeds, in 
purified fats it is also known as n fluorage n fluorage e n fluorage so these are the four methods expression steam distillation extraction by the volatile solvents fourth one is adsorption in purified fats so now here if you start with the expression expression actually it is just like the sugar cane we get this uh, juice from the sugar cane it is just expressed press nichodna so in this way we can get the uh, volatile ions so those volatile ions again they will contain the you see the aqueous solution also again we carry out the steam distillation then we will get the separated from the aqueous solution or by same using you apply applying the uh, the to uh, organic solvent then if you put the separating funnel if organic solvent volatile organic solvent just like petroleum ether if you put it into the mixer that the obtained by the expression then the uh, the uh, terpene they will come in the petroleum ether or so we say uh, ether at two layers will be obtained so ether layer will contain the, the, the terpene oils aqueous layer, layer is is it discarded and again by dryness we will get this the uh, by uh, we will separate the terpene oils from the volatile oil otherwise by the steam distillation or directly we can carry out the steam distillation why we are carrying the steam distillation because they are they are very we say volatile oils essential oils volatile oils first two the monoterpene oils and cis terpene oils they are they are volatile at room temperature that is why we carry out the steam distillation because the steam distillation will um, keep the compound undecompose otherwise if you use the uh, te increase the temperature sometimes uh, the compound will dis de say, uh, say decompose mostly the, these uh, terpene oils they are liquid in nature so now here steam distillation is used steam distillation you know the steam distillation first at low temperature the mixture of the compound is it is a very low temperature and here then again a two neck flask is used from here another flask here in which the only water will be there we will heat this one so steam will come from this neck and at this from this another neck you push the condenser and your receiver receiver so at low low temperature and, and uh, with the help of steam the, the terpenoids which are present in the expressed compound the material this will be volatile will be evaporated and they they will be uh, uh, come into the condenser they will be condensed and now finally we will get the receiver so this is the method is steam distillation then the, the, the third method is the volatile extraction by the volatiles so first the compound the plants they are crushed into so you see uh, the um, uh, crushed material pressed and material sometimes or sometimes whatever the extract which is obtained from the by crushing the the, the the plants that crushed material or plant it, they will be aided with the volatile uh, solvents just like the ether so what ether the ext when you uh, use the extraction by solvent uh, the, just like similar if you press the compound then compound that will contain the you see uh, uh, along with the flowers other parts also so the flowers mostly they may contain little amount of water and mostly the the uh, uh, terpenoids but other material they will contain most contain would be water so the water aqueous solution will be present along with the terpenoids that terpenes we are using here especially these methods used for the the monoterpenoids that is and cis terpenoids so now what happens when we have this material the the crushed material similar to this one here you add the ether then ether will extract the all terpenoids we know we, these are the organic compounds they will come into the ethers which are volatile solvent and other layer will be the this uh, aqueous layer so if you put into this separating funnel there will be two layers upper layer will be the organic layer lower will be the lower aqueous layer just to separate the we will get this uh, aqueous layer is discarded 
and the uh, the organic layer that will con contain the, uh, the terpenoids or terpenes that will be uh, subjected to the uh, the frictional distillation and at that by using frictional distillation we will get the terpenoids finally adsorption in purified feeds first the feed is purified purified feed because it may not contain other impurities first the feed is purified then what happens a feed is warmed at about 50 degrees centigrade then fifth the warmed fit you see it is put in a, the, uh, the smooth surface and the petals rose the petals of the flower which mostly contain the terpene, terpenes they are put on the surface of this uh, the uh, purified uh, warmed fit and it's kept for a little time then what happens all of the terpenes they will come into the uh, the uh, fit which fate will absorb adsorption from the, uh, the flowers absorption in the fit so all terpenes they will be absorbed by the fits that is the enfilurage method so now fit which will absorb when it becomes saturated means it is fully uh, absorb all terpenes which are obtained from the uh, plant the fit once it is become saturated that it will absorb all material then it is dissolved ethanol because it is the organic material organic solvent uh, the organic material is soluble in organic then it is dissolved or digested in ethanol and then we have the solution again when you dissolve in ethanol then again you cool it if you cool it what happens the uh, terpenes they will come in the uh, uh, the alcohol alcohol is a liquid portion a fat will be a solidified and cooling so set will be now fat will be free from the terpenes all terpenes they will come in the ethanol so ethanol there will be two portion liquid portion and fat portion fat will be solid now separate the liquid the liquid that alcohol will contain the different uh, uh, terpenes then now separate out this ethanol which contain the mixture of terpenes then that methanol or sorry ethanol which contains the different mixture of the terpenes that will again subject it to the frictional distillation if you create frictional distillation at different frictions of temperature again our frictional crystallization frictional crystallization actually is used for the solid, solid materials here they are already liquid so for frictional distillation again we can separate because the, uh, the the alcohol has the uh, ethanol has it has itself about 78 degree uh, centigrade boiling point so the uh, terpenes they will boil at a very, very low temperature in this way we can separate the the terpenes from the uh, uh, ethanol so now once these terpenes are separated the from the alcohol then if it is pure it's okay otherwise we can separate by different other way mostly that the, the absorption expect the uh, 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 what you call it expertise that the liquid chromatographic method we can separate each uh, the, the terpenoids so in this way these are the four methods which are used for the expiration extraction of terpenoids now once the terpenoids are separated then their method is then we'll apply the method once we have the again to isolate the terpenoids or terpenes from the natural source then the that method again we will use the methods for the determination of or for the for the determination of or elucidation of the structure once the unknown terpenes or terpenoids are obtained by the methods isolation method then next method is general methods general methods of determining the structure of unknown terpenoids terpenes or terpenes if they are hydrocarbons with terpenes if oxygenated derivative then terpenoids Therapy. Now, these methods are just 
These are the same, only with the few difference. Only with the few difference, which are used for the alkalides. Otherwise, same methods will be used. Here, same, that pure. Now, is it Namazopan pure? Azanavati, pure specimen. Then we'll get the melting point. Because here, they are liquid, so we'll get the boiling point. Then molecular formula seems uh, ascertained by the usual method. We say, uh, normally use the bromine. So if the color of bromine disappears, it means there is they contain the double bond. And we know these contain the double bond. The, there are double bond, multiple double bonds are present in the structure. Because at one uh, isoprene unit, it contains the two double bond. So it is at least a simple compound contains the two isoprene units means four double bonds will be there so more than four will be double bond but not less than the double bond the two, two double bonds so now we, when the double bonds are present for the double bond means unsaturation normally for unsaturation we can carry out the bromination and then that bromination same can be used in a qualitative test or we can use for the quantitative and for quantitative we also use the hydrogenation that if double bond is present hydrogenation is carried out how many hydrogen molecules are added that will be used by the quantitative test then titration with the, the monoparthalic acid that is also used to determine the quantity or number of double bonds and these facts will uh, lead to the molecular formula the paired hydrocarbon then from, from which the rings present in the structure may be deduced then other methods here uh, preparation of nitrosoak chlorides Nitrosoak chloride, one is the nitro chloride, another nitrosoak chloride. Nitrosoak chloride. This method can also be used. That is nitros preparation and study of their behavior. This will also give the, the different clues for the type of structure present. Then, then dehydration of dehydrogenation. Dehydrogenation of type of with sulfur, selenium, platinum, or palladium. Otherwise, we normally we use the hydrogenation for hydrogen purpose, the platinum and palladium. But palladium, palladium, sulfur, selenium, they can also be used for the hydrogenation. And again, by dehydrogenation, whatever the products are obtained, by using, by studying those products, fragments, again we have the different, just like the heterosynthesis, we can have the, 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 the different information about the original structure. Then degradative oxidation. Degradative oxidation also gives the uh, best uh, tool for the say, uh, determination of structure. Here you see when double bonds are present, double bond, they also use ozonolysis. Ozonolysis can also be carried out for the confirmation of double bond. Which type of, for example, simply we say when ethene is there. If ethene undergo the ozonolysis, which compounds are found, two molecules of formaldehyde. If two molecules of formaldehyde present means two, that is two formaldehyde, they are combined together, means ethene. One is acetaldehyde, another is formaldehyde, means actual compound is propene. If two molecules of acetaldehyde are obtained, it means it is confirmed that the compound contains the two butene. If we say, no, we, we are getting the compound, that is a benzaldehyde plus formaldehyde. It means the original compound was styrene that contains this type of bond. So now using the ozone analysis with the ozone, we can again give the, have the different we say ideas about the structure. Then neutral or alkaline permanganate, uh, potassium permanganate, that is hydroxylation will take place. Chromic acid that will also oxidize the compound aldehyde, alcohol into aldehyde, finally aldehyde into carboxylic acid, sodium hypobromide. Other reagents are osmium tetraoxide, which is also oxidizing agent. Nitric acid, which is also oxidizing agent. Lead tetraacetate, peroxyacids, and n bromosoxinamide for allylic bromination. They are used. Furthermore, owing to the increased knowledge of the behavior of oxidizing reagents, it is also now possible to select a reagent for oxidizing particular group in the molecule. Just like the reduction, we either use the, uh, the hydrogenation or sometimes for example if the double bond is present aldehyde is present for uh, last time we used a reducing agent if you carry out the you see uh, catalytic reduction both groups will be reduced but if you use only the lithium aluminum hydride only aldehyde will be reduced 
or ketones reduced. So we can use your oxidation particular at particular point. So now using this particular compound, particular oxidation, we can again have different knowledge of the compound. Finally, ultraviolet spectroscopy. Ultraviolet is, is, is here it is is used commonly. We know that ultraviolet spectroscopy mainly it is used for the presence of double bond. Double bonded compound chromophoric group. All compounds which contain the chromo chromophoric group, they only give the response. Otherwise, cyclohexane this will not absorb. But instead of cyclohexane, if you cyclohexane try it, that contain three double bonds conjugation. When there is a conjugation, there will be the bathochromic shift, increase absorption, increase rate of the value of absorption. That is more absorptive also will increase. So there are different values. For example, if we have conjugated, the non-conjugated, the conjugated will absorb the higher, you say, in the uh, wavelengths. Also, they will absorb with more, uh, more, more uh, high molar absorptivity. In this case, again, there are different values. If you find the all values in detail, then volume two, while I will find out there is detail is given. Annular molecular, exocyclic, endocyclic, double bond is present inside the ring outside the ring, then there will be difference. At least if one alkyl group is there, then sometimes exocyclic or endocyclic. The difference, if one uh, uh, the carbon is increased, that is one methyl group or one alkyl group is increased, then we say the, there will be change in molecular weight, uh, the, uh, the absorb molar absorbity. Normally it is calculated as a five, the increase will be with the five nanometer. Detail is there. Then uh, infrared spectroscopy, infrared is, 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 will be give the give the in, information about the double bond, as well as whether this contains the aldehyde group or ketonic group or carboxylic acid group. Aldehyde group or ketonic group, they contain the carbonyl group and carbonyl group they are absorbing at the about 1680. And the difference, main difference between the ketone and aldehydes, ketone they are slightly absorbing the higher wavelength, ketones they are lower level. Aldehydes absorbing at the lower, uh, the higher uh, uh, the uh, wave number, wavelength, and ketonic at the lower. Otherwise, they are most absorbent, they are more than 1600. And they give the is sharp peak. Sharp, large peak is obtained when the ketonic and the aldehyde is present. If it is aromatic, there will be between the 60, 600 and 700, or eight, between the 600 and 800. Two peaks will be there. If it is open chain, there will be no these peaks. Again, it's ar aromatic. The CH is stretching. Th this absorption will be more at the uh, stretching. This will uh, give the, uh, uh, the uh, peaks at higher than 3000. If aliphatic, then lower than 3000. Two peaks are one peaks are mostly two peaks. One is symmetrical, another unsymmetrical. But here, value if it is th less than 3000, then we say it is aliphatic. More than 3000, it is aliphatic. The aromatic. If along with this one, a broader band is obtained, it means OH is present. OH, it may be due to the alcoholic group or it may be to the, it may be due to the carboxylic group. If it is only this group, only group, and at this position there is no group, it means alcohol. But one group, this broad spectrum plus this peak is present, means carbonyl group plus OH group is combinedly present. Then we say it is carboxylic acid. So in this way, the infrared spectroscopy is used to help us to determine the structure of whether the terpenoid, many basic terpenoids, it contains the alcohol, aldehyde, ketone, or carboxylic acid, or simply it is only hydrocarbon. If it is simply hydrocarbon, then it will only show the absorption of double bond, CC double bond. But there will be no absorption for this ketonic aldehyde or carbonyl group, there will be no for the OH group. In this way, again, there is a mass spectroscopy. Mass spectroscopy nowadays it is, it is most important. It can give the, uh, the, uh, the knowledge about the functional group as well as the relative positions of double bond. Also, it will give the, uh, the say, uh, total uh, knowledge about the molecular weight and molecular, which will lead the molecular formula. Finally, we will get the molecular formula. Then optical rotation, X-ray analysis. X-ray analysis, analysis is used mostly. The compound, if two compounds is there, if there is one is cis, another trans, 
So in this way, by using X-ray X-ray analysis, we can confirm that the structure is stereochemistry. You see, especially this kind of X-ray analysis used for the the elucidation of or for to know the stereochemistry. When we carry out all these bioplug methods, this is the last tool to come from the structure. Whatever the structure we have determined by the the chemical methods, as we have done the alkalides, chemical methods and analytical methods, and sometimes these both methods are combined. So whatever the knowledge which I, we have got by combination of chemical method as well as analytical method, those both and informations they will be come from by the from the uh, uh, the synthesis. So once the compound is synthesized, and after synthesis, whatever the structure we propose to the compound, if this compound is coinciding with the structures which is uh, the knowledge which uh, we have obtained from these methods, applying the method, if the but the, see, these are coins matching, it means the structure of the unknown that we write is confirmed. So now these are the different methods by which we can isolate, then we apply the, these methods to determine the structure of compound. Now individual initial from tomorrow will use the individual compound. The first compound is the acyclic compound, then monocyclic compound, then the bicyclic compound. So now Namaz Mogi. Then the other one is the other one. So now, inshallah, we will start with the citral or the basic compound. Okay, Baba? Yes, sir. Okay, Baba. 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 Yes, Camphor and menthol, their uh, basic structure and general methods, and then finally their synthesis. We will do the, tomorrow, inshallah, and conduct these uh, topics. Okay? Thank you, Baba.